We're glad to know that you're still there. It's still plus politics. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. The appeal court turned down the request made by OB that Beaver's machines should not be reconfigured ahead of the governorship and state assembly elections this weekend. Oh, well, the election has been postponed to the next weekend. A three-member panel of the appellate court, led by Justice Joseph Iker, granted leave to the applicant for the purpose of configuring the beavers for the election on Saturday. The panel, however, asked INEC to upload data to back-end server and make true certified copies to the respondents. The court granted a dual permission following two separate ex parte applications filed by Atiku and Obi of the, Labour, of the PDP and the Labour Party, respectively, who came second and third in the presidential election, won by Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress, APC. At least he's the one who has been declared president-elect. The commission is asking the court to vary the order to allow it to reconfigure its bimodal voter accreditation system, BVAS, for the March 11 uh, governorship election that has been moved uh, one week ahead or further. And uh, state houses of assembly elections also are going to be held on that day. Counsel to INEC, Tanim, Tanimu Inuwa, said the application became necessary following an order restraining it from tampering with the information embedded in the beaver's machine until due inspection was conducted and certified. He added that the commission would require sufficient time to reconfigure the beavers needed to conduct the election that would take place on Saturday 18th. They, uh, he told the court that INEC would upload from back end. Joining us uh, to discuss tonight is Benga Olorunpwemi, a public relations consultant and APC member. We also have Honorable Funke Awolowo, Deputy Chairperson, Lega State Exco's Labour Party, and Adetunji Omotola, PDP Chieftain. Thank you, gentlemen and lady, for staying with us. Thank you very much for having us. Okay. Thanks for having me. Good. Uh, where do we start? Ladies first, as they say. And now, it is your party, the Labour Party, that went and demanded that they be allowed to inspect, inspect these things, the beavers machines, and make sure all the evidences are taken out uh, before the reconfiguration of these machines, because maybe the information might be lost. Now that the courts have said that the INEC can reconfigure these machines and elections have been moved to one week after the uh, one week from 11th of March. What is your reaction to the development? First of all, good evening. Thank you for this opportunity. Good evening. I'm just wondering what took them four years to establish and they've made so much mistakes. Will they be able to correct it in a week? That's a puzzling you know, situation. And um, I'm wondering why they will decline one and then they will ask, they will then ask the whole INEC. Because really, when you look at it, INEC is the culprit here. They have actually treated what they were supposed to make priority and um, a whole that has gone through terrorism, that has gone through so many things and then so, you know, we have great expectation for a new form of government and this is what we are faced with and I just feel that INEC is basically playing with lives, if you ask me. You know, they're playing with uh, old lives, you know, the lives of Nigerians. They're playing with a systemic rot, which they're a part of, and we can see that. And um, I don't know what magic they'll be able to do in a week. That's the truth. I really don't know. Okay, uh, let me come to you, Omotola. Uh, what is your response also to this development? You are of the PDP. What are you... Uh, what would be your reaction to what is happening right now? Maybe you speak your mind or the mind of your party. Well, thank you very much. So, first of all, we are very concerned about 
the situation we find ourselves. I mean, we have seen the presidential elections and the National Assembly elections February 25th. The international observers, uh, many people across board, have said that the elections were not transparent, that they were not largely free and fair. I may fail to upload the results from the polling units to the IREP machine or the IREP portal. And as a result of that, we have seen that post the results being announced and a winner being declared on the 1st of March, that there's been a lot of uh, calamity. In fact, results coming up and all sorts of uh, figures that don't make any sense have been brought forward on the INEC portal. So now we now find ourselves in a scenario where elections have been postponed for a week. The court says INEC can configure. INEC says, well, even though the court says we can configure, we don't, we, they, we don't have enough time for the configuration to happen. And as a result, we must delay the elections. Well, from where we're sitting as PDP, we don't really have confidence in the INEC chairman. And that is why you'll find that PDP has actually said, I mean, our flag bearer, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, said that he's going to go to court. So all of this that INEC is doing is really medicine after death. This, these elections have been really below the standard, whether international or even African standard. But of course, we've had some bodies like ECOWAS and the African Union and the Commonwealth saying that they were largely peaceful. I mean, President, former President Abu Mbeki said that, and also President Bai Koroma, former President Bai Koroma of Sierra Leone. But as a party, we believe that these elections uh, the presidential elections have not been conducted in the manner and way that INEC, particularly the chairman, Professor Mahmoud uh, Yakubu, told us that the results will be uploaded from the polling units to the IREP. That has not happened. So any efforts to um, gloss over it or make it go away is really not good enough. And we're very disappointed once more that the elections have been postponed. In fact, we believe that this is also consistent with the tardiness of INEC as a body. Whatever, whatever the contention is, is to is other parties saying that your party did not win legitimately, and they want to inspect materials and the whatever is happening. What is your own reaction, you as a person or as your party, to the complaints of the opposition parties and what is going on right now? Um, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, tonight, I think uh, you are putting me in the spot to defend INEC, and I don't think it's fair. Uh, so what I'll do, try and do is to speak to the the issues as I know them, and I'll be as empirical as I can. So, what is what was on the uh, in front of the judges today was that INEC was pleading with the courts that they need to reconfigure these beavers machines, which were used on the presidential election, to reconfigure them so that they will be ready for the gubernatorial to be used for the gubernatorial elections. That was what INEC went to court to do, to ask that, look, these are the same machines. We have always, it's always been in the plan that we need four days, four clear days between the day that the, the machines will be reused and when the process of reconfiguration starts before, for us to reconfigure this machine. Now, what, the, and it is funny that the two big opposition parties are crying and asking the courts to uh, allow them inspect these machines. Um, I want to ask the PDP and the LP, if ever machines to be used for election were handed over to the APC to inspect, for whatever reason, would you ever agree to use those same machines for any election in the future? If you give me, I remember the APC, the machines that will be used for elections, 
in future elections to inspect because I have a problem in the last election. Will you be happy? Will you allow me to use those same machines in the next election? Because you, you, you won't, because you'd be afraid I would have tampered with it and skewed it to my advantage. So in the wisdom of the courts, what they are saying is that you don't need the machines. What you need is the information on the machines, which INET has already said was already backed up on the servers and could be would be available for inspection by all parties. And again, it is funny that these two main opposition parties are here crying about that the election was unfair. But these same people are celebrating their um, members of National Assembly who won elections. This election, left to me as a, as a person, is probably the fairest election in the history of this country. And I'll give you a few reasons why. This is the first time that seven sitting governors, seven, seven governors have failed in their bid to go and retire in the Senate. Seven. Of these seven governors, I've not seen one of them to come out to say I was unfairly beaten. Because they knew they were beaten fair and square. In Nasarawa, the former governor of Nasarawa lost his election to an SDP member. SDP. In Nasarawa, as I speak to you, two of their Senate, uh, Senate uh, 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 elect members are members of the SDP. So, why would you say that elections were unfair? Now, there's a lot of noise about elections, about the elections that are held in Lagos. But the funny thing is this, Ben Hondei, who is the PRO of, of, um, of the police, tweeted that, yes, the police were invited to hundreds of polling units, but only 28 out of over 13,000 polling units in Lagos had issues. Had issues. Only 28 were had issues to the point where they had to be cancelled. So exactly what is the issue that... These parties have an election that was done, that was fair, and everybody saw the results. You said, oh, the elections, the, the things weren't uploaded. As I speak to you, all this information has been uploaded. Yes, I next said in their guidelines that they would like to, that they want to upload the information from the polling units. Of course, things happen. And that doesn't negate or reduce the credibility of that election. So okay. what I'm saying here, in essence, is this. The judges have saved this country by saying, look, don't inspect, you don't need to see the machines. The data on the machine is what you need. And that is what we are going ahead with. And as I, and the reason why the election were postponed was because there was not enough time to reconfigure the machines. Okay. I'm sure that by the time the configuration is done, that by means, next election, by That means you're week, comfortable with this election and you're calling it free and fair, no matter what happens. Okay, uh, well... I, I, in the fair because... Uh, the, because the Labour Party and the PDP Party agree with me. Yes, we've, we've heard that. We've, we've heard that. Let's 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 move to the next. Let me, let's move to the next thing. We don't have much time. We don't have much time. Thank you very much. Um, let me come to Honourable Awolowo. Uh, you've heard what the PDP uh, person said. Uh, Benga just said. Um, you seem to be the same on the same page with uh, the. With the AP, uh, the PDP man uh, who is a uh, Motola, and elections are coming in the next uh, like ten days or so. Next week, next week Saturday, we are going to have that election that was supposed to hold or was supposed to be held this Saturday. Now, what spirit are you going into that election? Are you going into that election uh, as? people who are prepared and want to go and win or you've, you have lost confidence and you may not go into that election. What spirit are you taking into the next election that is coming, which is the gubernatorial election? Thank you. With high spirits because um, you heard him when he said um, only 28 or something. You know, we need you. What? I'm thinking from what he said, they were real and in spite against a reasonable winning number. And that speaks um, volumes. And so with that, you know, our presidential candidate, Peter Obi, has told us to be unrelenting, to go for it, yes. And we know that this time around, we're not going to go in 
We are not going to be fleet parents. We are going to be a lot more prepared for all the contrariness that might occur during this election. So, you know, we're not, we are not um, down, in, feeling down in any way. We need it that when there's a will, there's a way. Even shake of state, that certain things, even corruption, will bar. So really, we are not dispirited in any way. Mm -hmm. You know, a great Nigeria, a good Nigeria, which we've been fighting for, which we are expecting, is really possible. And thank God we have the judiciary, we have the courts, and I believe that something will give for the good of all Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Tunji, what about you? Uh, we're going to have that election. The contention is in the presidential election. Uh, is it really to cancel the election or you're just looking at areas that you did not win? Uh, you did not win and you want to look into the issues that went on in those areas. So what is your frame of mind regarding this presidential election, would you be more comfortable if everything was cancelled and it was redone? Well, look, as a party, we are not seeking cancellation at this stage. But obviously, what is important is that INEC follows the electoral law. If the results are meant to be uploaded from the polling units to the IRA portal, that must be done. And what we have seen is that even now, the results have been uploaded. It looks quite bizarre. Some of the results, I mean, we've seen Jigawa pop up in Oshun, and all sorts of figures have been bandied around. That doesn't make any sense. In fact, in terms of the collation, when you look at it, they say 400,000, and then you look at it, you see that it doesn't add up to 400,000. So we just want the exact thing that transpired on the 25th of February. We want uh, INEC to share that with Nigerians. We don't want something that looks like an abracadabra. But in terms of the elections that have been postponed, we believe that our candidate who is running for the governorship of Lagos, Dr. Abdulaziz Olajide Adedioro, he is the man for the season. We believe that he has the pedigree and he has a very good manifesto to be able to reverse some of the injustices that have happened under the watch of the APC for the last 24 years. We don't want a situation like Zimbabwe, where one party governs for 40 years and there's no room for opposition to come to power. Lagos has been held under the stranglehold of largely one politician who has now been declared as the president-elect in a very controversial circumstances. So our party, we believe that we have enough uh, firepower in Dr. Olajide Adedero to be able to reverse a lot of the injustices. The infrastructure in Lagos is very poor. The hospitals are largely non-existent. And we need a Lagos that works. We need a Lagos that connects with the ordinary people of Lagos, not only for the elites, as it is currently. Mm. Okay, uh, let, me, let me go to Benga as well. Uh, this election that the other parties are complaining of, you are applauding at INEC now. They've done a very good job. What if now that there are litigations, it turns out that the courts give to another party? What will be your reaction? Will you still trust the courts as you're trusting INEC now? So... Uh, I belong to a very law-abiding party, the party that is guided by rules and um, regulations of this country. Um, and of course, we we'll stand by, but we don't even see the chance of that. And I'll tell you why. Um, my candidate won in 12 states and had a spread, the, the second um, requisite, which is spread, yeah, he had 25% in tax states across the country. Um, my candidate worked the hardest. He campaigned very hard, and he came out with the highest number of votes. I don't see a situation in any way possible that the neighbor or the PDP will tell me. That what if it happens? It just, just speculation. What if it happens? No, no, no. I have answered you. I've said that we are a law-abiding party, but I'm insisting that that is not going to happen. 
Why? We have the numbers, we have the spread. Neither of the two parties um, have what we have. No, God. And I, I, I would like to ask, uh, believe me, if it's okay to come here and speak to and be uh, very verbose and not speak to yeah, exactly. Wrap it up, wrap it you up, say you have time. time. Yes. What exactly what are the issues you, they have with uh, these numbers? They don't know. So, but we have, we are very confident that we will win in any courts that we're taking. So thank you very much. Okay, well, um, uh, we have in Lagos State here, we have Abdulaziz uh, Adediron, who is the uh, governorship candidate. Uh, we know him as Jando. We also have Babajide Somolu, who is the sitting governor, uh, that is for APC. And LP, we have Badebo Rotsvivo, who is also contesting. All we can say is, may the best man win. Uh, whoever is contesting, good luck to all of them. Well, I'd like to thank you, uh, gentlemen and lady, uh, for coming on the show. Benga Olorunkwemi for APC, Honorable Funke uh, Wolowo for LP, and Adetunji Omotola for PDP. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Yes. Well, that's how much we can take for today. We do hope that we'll return tomorrow with yet another issue to discuss. Until then, my name is Nyamgul. Agaji saying bye for now.